Hello, this is Brett from Survival Comms. The radio on the bench today is the Alenco DJ MD5 TGP. The radio is a dual band VHF UHF portable radio that operates in analog and digital DMR modes. Typically in VHF UHF, I only utilize two digital modes, and that is either P25 or DMR. I know I may get some hate for saying that those are the only two digital protocols that I use, uh, but I don't truly find Fusion or D-Star to be relevant because they're manufacturer specific, whereas P25 and DMR are both available in multiple manufacturers platforms. Opening it up, we've got our user manual and our warranty registration card. Well, here's what's in the box. You get a programming cable. It comes with a wrist lanyard belt clip with two retention screws. Here's our included whip which is an SMA female. We have our battery pack which is a lithium ion pack. It's a 7.4 volt battery at 1700 milliamp hours of capacity. Charger is a standard desktop charger that's included. Our radio itself, the top, we have our RF connection which is an SMA male and we have a looks like a channel or mode selector knob and on this side here we have a volume on off control that has a protective molding on the side of it. The front has a display. We have an up and down arrows. It looks like we have a select and perhaps a back key. And we have several numeric keys and our microphone and speaker. On this side we have our push to talk and two programmable buttons. And on this side here we have our USB which is our programming port and our microphone and speaker connector. And on the back side of the radio we have our FCC Part 15 label, our product description label, and the chassis appears to be a metal casting. Um, it, I almost thought it might be like a metalized plastic, but in using a dental pick here and scoring it, it is metal. Battery contacts are retained with Phillips screws. The chassis of the radio is held together with torque screws battery retention is this latch right here and it hooks at the bottom here we'll do some size comparisons here this is the ICOM ICT-70A and this is a Hytera PD-362 so you can see that this radio is a bit larger and this one a bit smaller as far as thickness is concerned so this will kind of give you some idea here. Here are the features of the radio and instead of just reading off of the flyer I've decided to put them on the whiteboard for you. The radio is a VHF UHF transceiver and it also receives FM broadcast band. The radio operates in two modes. It does FM and it does digital in a DMR mode. The radio features a mixed mode receive which means that you're either giving analog or digital priority on transmit, but you'll be able to receive both on that same RF channel if you set the radio up to do so. The radio operates in 25 kilohertz legacy wideband and 12 and a half kilohertz narrowband frequencies. The radio does feature a VFO mode, and as such, that means front panel programming and just about every feature that the radio is capable of supporting you can program from the menu system in the radio. This being the case the menu system is extremely complicated. Switching between the memory mode and the VFO mode is not as seamless as it is with other radios. However, this radio is legal for Part 90 service. Here is the Form 731 a testing such from the FCC. The way they did that is by making it somewhat convoluted to move between the memory and the VFO mode. No wideband key means that there's no entitlement key required to program legacy 25 kilohertz channels in the radio. And again, since that's how most amateur radio repeaters in the 2 meter and 70 centimeter band operate in analog FM, the PC programming software is free and it's easy to manipulate. programming cable is not a special cable, it's just a USB cable for an Android telephone. The radio possesses lots of memory space, 4,000 memories in up to 250 zones. 
on the DMR side of the house, it will support up to 10,000 talk groups, 250 IDs for your particular radio, if such is necessary, and it has a contact list that can support up to 160,000. The radio supports 250 scan lists. The radio also features a GPS receiver. The GPS receiver does not output coordinates in a grid system, which is what I prefer. And with the later revisions of firmware, there is some APRS operability in it. I am not an APRS guy, so your mileage may vary. The following features are what I consider proprietary because if in order to use them effectively you're going to need more than one of these radios so you're either going to need to flee these radios or other users that are using it to utilize these features. One of them is like a man down setting. They do GPS position and ranging to where you can send your coordinates back and forth to one another. The radio also has management features such as remote check, monitor, and inhibit. And for the licensed Part 90 user, the radio does feature a low-level form of encryption. With our radio powered up, we'll go over the display here. Up here, you have your radio signal strength indicator. You have this, which represents your channel power. This is a medium power. Uh, a box H is high power, box L is low, and a box S is short power, which is an extreme low power setting. This red dot here indicates that our GPS is on and our position is fixed in the GPS receiver. This is your battery indicator, and I have it set up right now with the, the main band and the sub band. So they'll both receive, as you can see we're on a UHF channel here and a VHF here, and I'll be able to receive either or. My transmit is toggled for the main band, and depending on how you set up your button here, it's an instant key press to step between the band and the sub band. Now to be able to enter VFO mode, if you hit your button to put it in VFO mode, it tells you that that's not supported. So you end up having to step through it and go into settings, radio settings, channel name, select, and you need to go to frequency. And once you select frequency into here, you can back out, and you can see there are frequencies. And when you do a long key press, you can see now it's in your VFO mode. Depending on your channel step, you can see we're set at 12 and a half kilohertz now. And we can step through here. And you can manipulate your menus to set yourself a repeater or whatever have you. And you can write these particular frequencies to memory if desired. Here's another little quirk about the radio. You get it out of the box, you're excited, charge your battery. Put your amateur frequencies in, and you hit to push to talk, and you get transmit prohibit. Well, the radio as a default has transmit prohibit on all the, on both of the VFO modes, and the way you address that is because your VFO modes are considered channels in the radio. You go to your channel settings menu, select it. Go to Transmit Prohibit, you can select it, you can turn that off, and go back, exit, and now you can transmit. Well, let's put it on the service monitor and see if it lives up to its marketing. This is the rated audio test. Our portable radio, per the spec sheet, will deliver one watt of audio and with 16 ohm load. Per the service monitor, it's delivering 3.35, so it's falling a little short of that goal. This is our receiver test VHF wideband. The specification sheet says that the radio will be at 12 dB synad at a input level of one quarter microvolt. And as you can see, we're doing much better than that at one quarter microvolt, so we'll go ahead and reduce our signal level and see where our 12 dB level resides at and you can see that here somewhere around 1.9 yeah I'll start to lose it about there and this is what that signal will sound like so this is performing better than specified and here is our UHF receiver sensitivity which is 0.165 microvolts and here's what signal sounds like. 
and again that's uh, performing better than the specifications. At UHF and narrowband our receiver sensitivity is exceeding specifications again. Let's see what that signal sounds like. Here's our receiver test VHF narrowband and you can see that it is exceeding specifications once again. Transmitter test at VHF wideband narrowband mid power low power and finally short power UHF wideband high power UHF narrowband mid power UHF low power wideband UHF short power wideband on the spectrum analyzer here is our Alenco at VHF for comparison this is the Baofeng BF F8 HP all the harmonics. I just have to do that again. <laughs> this is our Linko at UHF. You can see we've got one little spike here. In comparison, this is the Motorola. What do I think about this radio? I'm glad I bought it. It's a nice compact radio and it's gonna fill its role for me just fine. I like the control set. I like the display. The performance of the radio is good. The uh, features are outstanding. It's got a ton of features in there, and this is just scratching the surface in this video. The battery life's decent. The software's decent. Uh, I like having the programming cable where it's not a proprietary cable. I don't need to uh, purchase an additional cable. I like the ability to program all of the variables from the keypad if I choose to do that. That's really cool. The downsides to it are that it is has a very complicated menu and it would not make a great radio for a first radio for somebody because it is kind of complicated and the scan speed as you can see here is kind of slow but other than that again I'm glad I picked it up I hope this helps this is Brett from Survival Comms till next time